Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Assistant President. The federal election is less than two weeks away. Voters across the Hunter and the Central Coast have a choice to make. They can choose the coalition government, a government with a strong record on the economy, an economy with an unemployment rate of 4 per cent and falling, despite a global pandemic that caused dual health and economic crises, or they can choose the Labor-Greens alliance, led by Anthony Albanese, someone who has never held a financial or national security portfolio. For too long, the Labor Party has taken the hunter for granted. We know that in order to win votes in the regions, they will say anything to secure the votes of workers, but elsewhere they will say something else, bending to the left fringe in inner city electorates. No clearer is this flip-flopping more evident than in the electorate of Paterson. In the seat of Paterson, the Liberal Party has an excellent candidate in Brooke Bittnell. Brooke is a born and raised local, she's a local solicitor and a local advocate uh, for her community there, taking leadership roles with the Port Stephens Community Drug Action Team, Youth Mental Health Group, COPSI, uh, and an active member of Madawi Lions, the Madawi Town Rotary Club and Marine Rescue Port Stephens. As a candidate, Brooke has already had a strong record working with the government to secure significant in infrastructure investments in the region. We've seen this with the Curry Curry gas-fired power station on the former site of the aluminium smelter in Curry Curry. When the plan was announced in May 2021, the local Labor member urged the government to get on and build it as quickly as they can. But since then, we have seen a lineup of her Labor colleagues talk down and seriously undermine this vital project. Chris Bowen, the Shadow Minister for Energy, said the project was a cynical attempt to pick a fight on gas and continue the climate wars. Pat Conroy, the Labor member in the neighbouring seat of Shortland, called the project a dog. Well, Nell McGill knows that in Shortland they need it to keep the lights on and to keep the fridge running into the future. Penny Wong, part of the Labor leadership team, said, I think that is the demonstration of a failure of policy. And Josh Burns, an MP from Melbourne, said this whole deal is absurd. It seems that in Paterson, the local member has been disciplined and brought into line because despite urging for it to be built quickly, nine months later, she was more than happy to stand beside Anthony Albanese while he called the curry gas plant flawed. Now, we've also seen the local Labor member try and hoodwink voters by saying that the M1 extension uh, needs to be fast-tracked. And I, I'm advised that she promises to somehow do that if Labor come into government, despite a tender process currently being underway to select a constructor for the project. So how exactly would Labor subvert an active tender process, the process to get the best value for taxpayers, to stop the process and hand it to some firm with the strongest union ties? That remains to be seen, and we hope we don't see it after May the 21st. The M1 extension to Raymond Terrace is a generational project for the Hunter, 15 kilometres of an extension to include four-lane divided motorway. I've spoken in this chamber uh, before, Mr Assistant President, on this. Um, the project will deliver an important economic boost uh, over the long term for the Hunter, supporting 2,700 jobs in construction. Uh, despite claiming to have been fighting hard for the project for five years, uh, I can find no evidence uh, of the Labor member for Paterson doing this. In her time in Parliament, uh, she's asked just one question on that project in question time three years ago. Not exactly what I would call fighting hard. Uh, the Liberals and Nationals in government have secured a further $55 million to upgrade the Newcastle Airport Terminal, uh, in addition to the announcement in last year's budget of $66 million. Um, once again, the local Labor member said that she helped to apply unrelenting pressure on the government to fund the project. But the question is, did she? Let's check the receipts. Not one written question to the former Minister for Defence, uh, Linda Reynolds, to the current Minister for Defence, Peter Dutton, or the former Minister for Infrastructure, Michael McCormack, during the current term of Parliament. And there is also no evidence that she requested a meeting with any of these ministers uh, on such an integral issue to growing the economy that underpins that region there uh, across Port Stephens and, and more broadly through the Hunter. It seems the local member gave just one small speech to Parliament uh, for 90 seconds in 2019, hardly what you would call unrelenting pressure. And the next three years are an extremely exciting uh, period for this region. These projects getting away in, in addition to uh, various other projects, thanks to the work of the federal Liberal National Government and of course our government, uh, one of note, the hunter hydrogen industry taking off into the future. And voters in Paterson deserve a local member who will actually speak for the region at every available opportunity and they'll have exactly that chance on May the 21st.